Welcome once again to The Basement Reef. If this is your first time tuning into our channel, we're a retail aquatic pet store and houseplant shop located in Columbia, Missouri. And if you've ever been in our store before, maybe you've seen this 36 gallon bow front display behind the counter. This is actually my very first reef tank that I started up over eight years ago. Today, it's mostly a soft coral tank, but it's gone through many iterations over the years. It wasn't even originally in this bow front. It started out as a standard 20 gallon tall. The clownfish in the front of the tank here, a fancy Ocellaris from Sustainable Aquatics, has been in the tank the entire time, so he's over eight years old at this point. Several of these pieces of live rock have been in here since the beginning, too. Most of the original corals are gone, but one has hung around since the beginning and that's these sort of green, blue discosoma mushrooms tucked in amongst those hairy mushrooms. At different points in time, they've exploded and covered most of this rock, and at other points, they've kind of died back. And that's kind of been the story with this tank all along. I've had it for eight years, so nothing's gonna go perfect the whole time, but I've avoided any major crashes. Here you can see some different pictures from the lifespan of the tank. This was the clownfish shortly after we got in. And here's some of those mushrooms, way back when it was just a single polyp. And here you can see the clownfish getting a little older. It's a good example of how the coloration of the fancy clownfish changes as they age. A couple of weeks ago, a good customer of ours, Cody, brought us in this 58 gallon rimless tank on the condition that we use it as a display in the store. So I said no problem and immediately thought that it would be nice to upgrade this display. Coincidentally, we also happened to come into possession of several very large soft coral colonies recently as well. This basketball-sized colony of Xenia, as well as a similar-sized colony of finger leather. There's also some Tyree green toadstools of assorted sizes, as well as various polyps and other leathers. This tank is exclusively soft corals right now, so we'll keep it that way. Soft coral tanks have a very different look from stony coral-dominated reefs and anymore is pretty underrepresented in the hobby, so this will be a really fun project. To start off this build today, I'm gonna glue some plumbing to connect the top tank to the sump. Usually this wouldn't be my first step, I'd move the tank into position, as well as a few other things, but I wanna move fast, because we're gonna move all of this livestock over in one go, and this can dry while we're taking care of the stuff that's in the tank right now. Now that that's taken care of, we can start to address the livestock that's in the tank right now. I'll begin by putting a little bit of water in each of these buckets, just enough to cover a couple of rocks in each one. If they were going to be in here for a couple of hours or longer, I'd run an air stone so that we can keep the oxygen high, but I think we can knock this out in an hour or less, so I'm not too concerned about that. All of these corals and the fish can hang out in the bucket the whole time that we're working on this. Once all of the rocks and corals are out of the tank, I can focus on catching these fish with no obstacles. It's quick work that way, so I definitely suggest doing that as your last step. After that, I'm ready to drain the tank and move on to the next step of this build. That doesn't make for a very interesting video, so we did that off camera. Now, a little bit of cleanup and we're ready to drag the new tank into position and really get this build rolling. Normally, I would place my aquascape in the tank before I put any sand, and that's because if the sand gets displaced, the rocks could move, and that's not a good situation. But today, we're moving rocks that already have coral attached to them over, and so I really want the tank to be filled before we do any of that. So, sand first it is. Then we start filling the tank. Here you can see me use a technique where I put the lid of a bucket in the tank to disperse the water, and that's so that the sand doesn't cloud the water as it fills. You can use a bowl or really anything, you just want something to splash the water onto that's not the sand. Now that the tank is mostly filled, I can start rebuilding my aquascape. I start with the largest and flattest rocks that don't have any coral on them. We want a nice foundation for this. Then I slowly start building back up what we had before, leaving room for these new corals as well. I'm keeping the right side of the tank mostly the same as it was before, and that's because that's how those two rocks have been in the aquascape the entire eight years I've had this tank. I think it'll be really nice to have part of it feel the same and really make this seem like an upgrade rather than a new tank. Then we simply place the rest, introduce the new livestock, and we're ready to finish filling and turn it on. Here we did just a handful of things off camera, but in the end, I'm really happy with how this tank turned out. We dressed the stand up a little bit with some sheets of lacquered plywood, leaving some access for the sump, and we cover it up with this octopus artwork, which looks quite nice. After a little more tweaking of the aquascape, and a night for the water to clear up, 
this is what we ended up with. I looked around the store for a few more pieces of soft coral and found this nice green finger leather hanging out in one of our tanks, as well as these forest fire rhodactus that you can see in the middle of the tank. This process wasn't without mishaps. Unfortunately, my cave-shaped rock that I've had since the very beginning of this tank broke in half while I was arranging the aquascape. In the end though, it honestly kind of looks more natural the way that I have it now, and I can see all of the mushrooms, whereas some were obscured on the back before. Sometimes things just work out like that. The large colonies of finger leather and xenia on the left side of the tank definitely have the effect I was looking for. Large soft coral colonies are every bit as stunning as a large stony colony, and ones like the finger leather kind of have the same look as far as their geometry. The large toadstools and other leathers throughout the tank should provide ample options for the clownfish to host. They don't just host anemones, you know. That's one other benefit of soft corals. It's essentially a clownfish playground. And here are those forest fire rhodactis. These guys really shine under blue lights, but they should grow nicely in this tank, and they're a good seller, so we'll farm off of this rock as it grows. In the end, I'm extremely happy with this tank. It still feels like my original reef tank, but also feels like something entirely new. And I think it'll do the job of getting some more soft corals to sell in our store. Already customers have seen this and been really impressed with it and wanted some for themselves. Hopefully this was an interesting video for you. I certainly had a lot of fun making it, and I'm excited to see how the tank grows in. Thank you so much for watching our channel, and please subscribe. That would help us out a ton.